Welcome to worship at Bethany Lutheran Church online. Our worship is a setting of Holy Communion for the third Sunday after Pentecost, and you are invited to join in from wherever you are. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus explores the true cost of discipleship, declaring that his words may bring stark division, and asking those who follow him to set aside their own will for God's. During this time of physical distancing, we have been celebrating the gift of our Lord's Supper of Holy Communion, each from our individual homes, using our own bread or crackers and wine or grape juice. If you desire to commune, please pause this video and set your table now. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our gathering.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. To labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For wherever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach, a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more of his name, then within me, there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. 
for to you I have committed my cause. So sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 69, verses 7 to 10, 11 to 15, and 16 to 18. Surely, for your sake, I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from my the mayor. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw me near to you and redeem me, because of mine enemies deliver me. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for wherever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach, a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more of his name, then within me, there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you... I have committed my cause. So sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading comes from the 10th chapter of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. 
If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for me, for my sake, will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How are things in your life of faith? None of today's scriptures seem to abound in that grace and peace that I just announced to you. Where is the good news? The prophet Jeremiah describes God's presence in his life as fire, a burning fire shut up in my bones, he says. The psalmist writes that his faith makes him an object of shame, gossip, insult, and reproach in his community. St. Paul reminds us that our commitment to Christ requires us not simply to be nice people, but to consider ourselves utterly dead to sin. And in our Gospel reading, Jesus speaks of exposed secrets, broken homes, heavy crosses, and lost lives. So what is the good news in today's gospel? What could Jesus possibly be talking about in saying that he came to bring a sword and not peace? And then going on to speak of divisions, even in close nuclear families, which were so important in his own society, has he forgotten the times he said he does come to give us peace? The time that he prayed to his Father that we might all be one, united as they are one? We heard him saying those things just a few weeks ago. Or was it only the evangelist John who remembered Jesus saying these uplifting things? Well, Jesus most likely said both. In fact, our scripture attests that he did say both. He talked about peace so much that it's clear he desired us to be at peace and united with one another. But on the other hand, Jesus knew that sadly the result of following him would cause division. Just look at history. Even nowadays, the, the effort at truth speaking 
can cause a huge lack of peace in families and in communities. Jesus said the truth will set us free, but he also knew it would be hard, hard and divisive. It's important for us to remember, however, that when Jesus speaks of division rather than peace in this gospel, he's being descriptive. He's not being prescriptive. Knowing Jesus as well as we do from all the gospels and the witness of the early church, it wasn't Jesus' desire or purpose to set fathers against sons or mothers against daughters. And I'm not just saying that to make us feel good on Father's Day. It's certainly not his will that we stir up conflict for conflict's sake or use his words to justify violence. At the same time, what Jesus has to say today reminds us that the peace that Jesus offers us isn't the fake peace of denial, of dishonesty, of looking the other way. Jesus' peace is a truth-telling and cutting peace, cutting with that sword he mentions, like a scalpel, cutting out what is rotten and diseased, overrun with cancers of numerous names and destructive powers, cutting it out and then disinfecting the wounds. Jesus' peace, it doesn't pretend to heal without breaking what has become wrong or crooked or unworkable in order that it might be mended. When we listen to Jesus, we will hear him speak to us of things we would often rather keep hidden from his eyes. When we listen to Jesus, we fear that he will upset the hierarchies which we would, most of us, like to just keep intact. Thank you. He will expose the lies we tell ourselves and one another out of a whole huge host of human traits, not the least of which are stubbornness and displaced loyalty. We fear, if we should really listen to Jesus, that he will disrupt the normal, the status quo in our relationships with, uh, with ourselves and with each other those dynamics that we've built up through the years. You know, those family and societal norms that make who we are and what we do look okay on the outside, but that keep us from ever, ever having the peace, the wholeness of body and soul in our hearts. Jesus doesn't shine his light on these things we call real life, or the way it is, because Jesus wants us to suffer, the Jesus we know so well wouldn't do that. Rather, he compels our attention to them because he knows, he knows that real peace, true unity with him and the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit is worth being disrupted for. I invite you to spend some time reading again the witness that we have in the Gospels, especially. Notice that Jesus forced choices from just about everyone he met during the years that he walked on the earth. No one met him without feeling compelled to change. He consistently brought people to the point of crisis, into tension, out of lethargy, into movement, or some kind of transformation. Over and over again, he led people to decisions that their families and their communities did not understand. Just find and explore, for one, that passage where Jesus was considered crazy by his mother and his siblings. Even then, divided from his family, he would not bow to the status quo. He had his eyes on 
and his mind set on that peace which passes all understanding. And so I have to ask myself, and I encourage you to ask yourself, when was the last time my faith divided me from people and things that are beloved to me? From habits and inclinations and alliances that make me feel like I belong somehow? When was the last time I allowed Jesus to bring me to a point of crisis because of faith? instead of sidestepping it, or flat out closing my eyes to it. When was the last time my faith life, your faith life, encouraged holy division, holy change in someone else's heart? And I wonder, am I, are we, are we more interested in being comfortable or in the saving mission we've been called to in Jesus. Do not fear, Jesus said. In the midst of all these other hard sayings today, he says, do not fear. This is a message he's consistently given to throughout the Gospels. And today he says more specifically, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. Fear God. If we would be faithful, According to Luther's explanation of the Eighth Commandment, and I know this is just one example, go to your catechism and remember them all, the Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does this mean, Luther says? We are to fear, fear and love God, so that we do not tell lies about our neighbors betray or slander them or destroy their reputations. Instead, we are to come to their defense, speak well of them, and interpret everything they do in the best possible light. In case we are asking ourselves, who is our neighbor? Jesus spoke to us about that too. As we heard in the parable that's often called the Good Samaritan, our neighbor is the one left dying along the road, the road that we travel on, the one whom Jesus would have us see. May Jesus disrupt our human constructs, break down our defenses, and guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen.
believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He died alone and forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the, On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be, to be everywhere, everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. We pray for the church that we may live in the confident assurance of God's abiding concern and providential care for us. For the grace of freedom, that God will free our hearts from fear and anxiety so that we may respond with love and concern in whatever God asks of us. For confidence to speak the truth that we may speak the truth that the Spirit has planted deep in our hearts, even when rejection and ridicule may be returned to us. For God's blessing upon all fathers and father figures, that they will be given strength to face both long-standing and emerging family needs. We also ask for God's blessing of comfort upon those who long to be fathers and those for whom this day is difficult. For all who have experienced or who live under the threat of violence, whether from neighborhood turmoil, organized crime, terrorism, or armed conflict, that they will know God's strengthening presence and redeeming love. For all who are struggling financially, that God would calm their hearts, guide them to the resources they need, and open the hearts of many to accompany them. that God will guide us in protecting the air, land, and water that we share so that all may benefit from God's gifts. For all who are researching treatments and vaccines for dangerous illnesses, that God will guide and inspire their work so that life can be preserved. For all elected leaders, that God will give them insight into the effects of their decisions and help them to make choices that will bring about the greatest good for all of society. For a listening spirit, that protesters, civic leaders, co-workers, neighbors and family members may listen more intently and understand more fully the pains, values, and goals of one another. For members and friends of our congregation, 
for healthcare workers, Rodney Asahara, Carrie Ching, Lois Erickson, Sean Fountain, Marcus Kuhlman, Jeanette Kuhlman, Jody Kushner, Craig Kowitsky, Belina McElvray, Wendy Sander, and Judy Scott. And for those in need of healing, Anna King, Belle Schrader, Marilyn Holt, Michael Dornacher, Noel Kane, Jamie Lima, Dave and Arvis Olson, Don Goddard, Francis Ching, Doug Holt, Ken Beals, Eric Miller, Tyler Bonsky, Claudia Leslie Rice, Louise Harris, Sally Pollock, Mark Olson, Gary Christensen, Joni and Rich Harrelson, Kevin Clement, Obi Espy, Dawn and Leanne Wells, Ken Thompson, Kathy Churchill, Nellie Feynedland, Owen Schutz, Lance Baker, Kathy Olson, and for all we name from our homes. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will take a few moments to do this. This is the time during our worship that we usually pass the offering plate, so we will be doing that now in a virtual way. While you are writing a check to mail or considering how else you might send your donation, let's watch and listen to a special musical offering.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We are bold to pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table where you are always welcome. Receive nourishment for your journey. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for me.
May the presence of Jesus in this bread and this wine strengthen and comfort you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ's peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God. God.